Hello, folks. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. Some of you might remember me, although you probably remember me with a bit more hair, a bit less collar. But I know many of you have joined the McGain family in the last few years. My name is David Gilmore. I'm the pastor in Clyde Community Church of the Nazarene in North Wales. I'm formerly the associate pastor of the McGain family. I want to read from Acts chapter 8. To set the scene, the church in Jerusalem has been scattered and dispersed. The world that they knew is gone. They're no longer able to meet together the way they once did. They're no longer able to serve together the way they once did. They've entered a new season, one unlike anything they had ever known before. It's hard to know how to relate that to today. Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven deacons appointed in Acts chapter 6, goes north to Samaria where he has a thriving ministry. Lives are being changed and the church is being built. The kingdom is coming. And then in verse 26, he receives a surprising message from God. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Leave this place where you're seeing such incredible fruit for your ministry. Leave this place where the oppressed are being liberated, where the lost are being found, where the sick are being healed. Leave this place that is so full of joy because of what God is saying and what God is doing, because of how God is working and moving, how he's rescuing and helping. Leave that place, says the Lord, and just go to a road. More than that, go to a desert road, a place that seems barren, that seems empty, that seems worthless. Go to a place where it seems that nothing is happening, where it seems that nothing can happen. Go to a place that looks and feels like a dead end. That's how many of us can be tempted to feel in these days. The church is scattered. The church is dispersed. Christianity is a fleshy religion because God became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. But we can't be with each other in the flesh and that hurts. We can't gather around the Lord's table in the way that we're used to where we are reminded in tasteable, tangible ways we are one body because one body was broken for all. So many of our ministries are closed, the sanctuaries are locked, the lights are out. And we can feel like Philip must surely have felt. Why do we have to leave? Why are we here at this road, at this desert road? But if you know the story, that desert road became a place of new life. A place where the kingdom broke in and burst out. A place where the gospel once again bore the fruit of a changed life. Where the gospel yet again became embodied and enfleshed in the life of a new believer who then carried it back to his home where it could bear yet more fruit. And so it will be for us. We may be on a desert road, but even here the kingdom is coming. We may have had to leave behind thriving, flourishing ministries, but even here, the gospel shall not kneel and shall not faint. Because even here, the message of the kingdom is advancing forcefully. And even here, the gates of Hades itself will not be able to stand against the church that Christ is building. So may we be like Philip. May we faithfully go to the desert road knowing that we will find God journeying with us and waiting for us. May we remember that our calling to live for God, being the hands and feet, the eyes and ears of God in the world, it doesn't stop just because the sanctuary is closed. And may we continue to be a part of what God is doing and saying what God is giving and showing, even here, even now, even on the desert road. Grace and peace be with you.